and welcome to another episode of SCFG Live. Science Club for Girls Live. I'm Hannah, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Wow, Mr. Music, that was much better than last time. Last time you were quite messy, but that made sense because it was a really messy episode, right? <laughs> exactly. Because last time we got to make slime. And it was really messy, but really fun at the same time. I know Namisha had a lot of fun playing with slime, so let's bring her in. Hi, Anna. And yes, you're totally right. I had so much fun playing with slime last time. In fact, once our episode was complete, I even experimented some more with slime. And this time, I tried to make edible slime with cornstarch and milk. It was super delicious. Wow, I didn't know you could make edible slime. That sounds super, super cool. I'm definitely gonna try that out at some point. I also thought it was really cool to learn that slime is neither a solid nor a liquid, but something completely different called a non-Newtonian fluid. This means that its viscosity changes depending on how you play with it. Actually, Namisha, do you mind showing us something? Try squeezing your slime really, really tightly into a ball. It feels kind of tough, huh? But now oh. stretch it out. And it should be more flexible and break kind of easily if you keep stretching it. Yeah, that was really neat to learn about. I also really enjoyed the process of making the slime and seeing how combining different ingredients together created something totally new. And based on our previous episodes on chemistry, it made me think that a chemical reaction was taking place when we mixed all our slime together. Great connection. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. When we mixed the glue and the activator, which is the borax and water, together, I started to see like a brand new texture forming. It was kind of liquidy at first, but as you kept mixing, it kind of got tighter, tighter and everything came together. It was super, super cool. That's so cool. Well, Hannah, today we're actually going to take a closer look at chemical reactions with our friends from Harvard Women in Chemistry. They are going to teach us more about acids and bases. Awesome. I, that's so perfect because I've actually wanted to learn a lot about acids and bases because I know one of the most common chemical reactions is an acid-base reaction. But I can't wait to see what experiment they have planned and let's take a look. Also, I want to mention that for this experiment, you will need some chopped red cabbage. If you don't have chopped red cabbage on hand, just watch and you can follow along when you do have some. You can also use something called a pH strip, which if you're not sure what that is, just wait till later and we will see. So let's take a look. Hi, we're Harvard Women in Chemistry and we're really excited to be with, here with you today doing an experiment with you. My name is Allie and I'm a scientist who studies cancer. I'm Jennifer. I look at reactions happening on surfaces. And I'm Allison and I study DNA. And hi, I'm Shelby. I study DNA and I'm going to be filming today. Today we're going to be doing an experiment with you looking at acids and bases around your house. So what is an acid or a base? For example, lemon juice would be something that's an acid and the opposite would be a base that's kind of something. To study acidity and basicity, we're going to be using red cabbage, which contains a special chemical that changes color depending on this property. We'll need four items for the experiment today. We'll need red cabbage, hot water, a coffee filter, and some household items to test for acid and base. Some of our favorite household items to test include lemon or lime juice, baking soda or baking powder, vinegar, soda, bleach or cleaner, or water. You can also test anything you have around your house, but clear or white items work best. At the end, we'll also do an additional experiment that uses a straw. So now we are going to get the chemical out of the cabbage. To do so, we're going to take some cabbage and put it in this glass container. Now we're going to add hot water, which we're storing in this thermos, and we're going to pour it into the cabbage. We're going to wait a minute while the special chemical gets dissolved in the solution. Now we are going to separate the cabbage from the juice using this coffee filter. Be careful, this is hot. We 
found some items from around our houses to test whether they're acids or base. I brought from my house ginger ale, baking soda, lemon juice, and laundry detergent. From my house, I brought water, baking powder, vinegar, and also bleach. We put the items that we wanted to test into cups or added water. Next, we're going to add the cabbage juice. What do you think will happen? Now that we have our guesses, we're going to add the cabbage juice. contains a chemical that when the solution is acidic, it turns red, but when it's basic, it turns blue. Can you guess which solutions are acidic and basic? It looks like the ginger ale and the lemon juice are acid. Wait, Allie, don't forget about the vinegar. It's also pink. By the way, there's also baking soda that's turned blue. I guess it's basic. Green and yellow colors are super basic, so that's the laundry detergent and the bleach. Do you think we can put them in order from acid to base? Let's do it. Acids are ginger ale, lemon juice, and vinegar. And the bases are baking soda, laundry detergent, and also bleach. There's also two that's right in the middle, including baking powder and also water. Isn't it cool that baking soda and baking powder are different colors? Even though they're used really similar in cooking, Baking powder has an extra acid, which makes it more purple rather than blue. Even our bodies contain acids and bases. The air we breathe out contains a molecule that when blown into water, turns it more acidic. To try this out, we're going to use water and cabbage juice. Do not use bleach or other chemicals. Now I'm going to blow some bubbles. We hope you had fun. We really enjoyed learning with you. See you next time! Wow, that was super, super cool. Especially when she started blowing bubbles into the cup and it turned the water purple. Yeah, and that must mean that there's something in our breath that is acidic, since acids turn purple when mixing with cabbage juice. And it's super cool how cabbage juice can help us see what things in our household are acids and which are bases. Instead of cabbage juice, scientists sometimes use things called pH strips, which look a little bit like this to test how acidic or basic things are. Hannah, want to know something really cool? What's that? Well, all of our teachers from Harvard Women in Chemistry are real life scientists. That is awesome. Wait, so do you mean they like work in a lab with like lab goggles and lab coats and all that stuff? 
Yeah, they sure do. In fact, Allie sent along a tour of her lab for us to see. Should we take a look? Yes, 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 please. I've always wanted to know what a real chemistry lab looks like. Let's definitely take a look. Hey girls, this is Allie, and I'm in my lab right now where I get to do a lot of research and science. And I thought I'd show you around so you could see what it looks like where we get to do all kinds of science experiments, just like the one we did today. All right, here's our lab. There's a few freezers um, and different instruments for getting water and taking measurements. We have fridges and freezers, kind of like you do at home, but for storing lab equipment. And here is where we grow cancer cells. Uh, you can see we have some growing in here. And here's a computer that we used to take measurements of them. And if we walk over here, we've got more fridges and freezers, as well as some chemistry fume hoods where we get to do chemical reactions. I also wanted to show you how something we use in the lab is really similar to the red cabbage that we use today. These paper strips have colors on them and they tell us whether a solution is an acid or a base, just like the red cabbage. Let's give it a try. A solution I have here is an acid. So what we do is we dip this paper into the solution and you can see it turned colors. These colors are kind of red, which similar to the red cabbage means that this solution is an acid. On the other hand, I have another solution here. Can you guess what this one might be? Well, let's give it a try. Here's another one of our strips. We pour it, put it in the solution very carefully. And you can see there's a blue color there which means that it's a base. So we use stuff just like red cabbage all the time in the lab. So you learned something today that real scientists use. I just thought I'd show you and um, give you a chance to look around the lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you next time. Wow, that was awesome. Just like Christina said, the lab is such a cool place to work. And I've always wanted to see what the inside of a real lab looked like. That was amazing. There's so much equipment and technology that they get to use every single day. Yeah, and it's really amazing to think that all of these cool things they're discovering every day is in that lab. We just got to see that. And I hope one day I can go visit. That Me lab. too. I can't wait. Oh, and Hannah, I thought it was super cool that we even got to see Allie in her lab coat and with her goggles, her safety goggles. We got to see like our scientist friend in action. That's so true. It was so cool to see how she was being really safe too, because she was dealing with chemicals. So she had to wear her lab goggles and her lab coat, and she even had gloves on, which was awesome. Now, if you thought that was cool, Nanisha, we're actually going to have another scientist on next week, and she's bringing along her adorable daughter. So I can't wait to see that. They're going to teach us all about conduction and heat transfer. So that was, or that will be awesome. Well, Namisha, it's been another great episode. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you again to all of our friends in the Harvard Women in Chemistry group. It's been another episode of SCO. Bye, everyone. Bye, Namisha. Bye. Bye. Thank you.